So it's December of 2016 and the great game theorist Thomas Schelling has recently passed away. Thomas Schelling was a great economist, Nobel laureate, and a lot of what he's famous for is working on the game theoretic problems associated with negotiations during the Cold War. So pretty exciting as far as theoretical mathematical economics go goes. So Thomas Schelling one of his big contributions was to point out that sometimes in a negotiation setting you can make yourself better off by reducing your own options. Now this is kind of counterintuitive because if you think about any sort of individual uh, problem where you're trying to just sort of maximize utility, having more options can't make you worse off. You know, if I, if I am looking at a selection of books on game theory and there are two books available, you know, maybe I choose the one I like better. But then if you bring out uh, 10 more books, you know, you come out of the back and say, hey, I found all these other books, I could still choose one of the two in front of me or I could choose one of the 10 you brought me. So I'm at least not worse off and probably better off by having more options. But in a negotiation setting where there's another person who is reacting to my strategy, I can actually be worse off by having more options. So the example Thomas Schelling gave was a game of chicken. Game, chicken's a game, hopefully you've never played it, and two people drive at each other in cars, and the loser is the one who, who turns away. Uh, but of course, if neither of them turn away, their, their cars crash and they both die. Um, so what Thomas Schelling said is, you know, in the, if you want to win the game of chicken, you rip off your steering wheel and wave it out the window. Uh, that way your opponent knows that you can't turn away anymore. You've reduced your options to one. You're going to go straight. And knowing that there's no chance of you turning away, they've got to turn away because the only other option for them now is to crash and die. Uh, this has actually been used historically as a strategy. For instance, uh, Cortes, the famous Spanish conquistador, landed in Mexico with 600 men and conquered the whole Aztec Empire. He famously burned his ships, came over on ships and burned them for all to see. And what that does is it tells your men that, okay, retreat is not an option. If you retreat, you die. There's no going home until we conquer this whole empire. But it also tells your opponent that, hey, these guys are not going to retreat. Maybe you should. You know, you, you, you can either run away or fight to the death because we're not going to. William the Conqueror did the same thing before the Battle of Hastings. He burned his boats. And, you know, if you're one of the Anglo-Saxons fighting him, you got to realize, huh, these guys are not going to run away. Maybe I should. So... That's an example of a, a game theoretic solution to a problem uh, where, where it's with a kind of unintuitive answer, an unintuitive solution to reduce your own choice set. Thomas Schelling actually consulted on the movie Dr. Strangelove with Stanley Kubrick. That's a, a, a black comedy about the Cold War. And if you haven't seen it, you really should. It's an excellent movie. Um, and one sort of sort of darkly funny element in it is that the Soviets have created a doomsday device, one of these um, option-reducing things. So if you're the Soviets and the Americans launch a nuclear first strike against you, you have two choices, right? You could strike back, uh, annihilating humanity, right? Because the Americans are going to nuke the Eastern Hemisphere, you're going to nuke the Western Hemisphere, and then everyone will die. Or you can not strike back, in which case half of humanity dies, but the other half goes on living. And at that point, once the missiles are already in the air, once, or, you know, in the, in the 1950s, it would have been bombers rather than uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles, once the nukes are, are set on their way to, to come and destroy you, you know, your choice is just, do I destroy all of humanity or just, you know, ha let half of humanity die? And there's no choice to save everyone. But before the nukes are in the air, you would want to have this deterrent. You'd want to commit, you know, just like ripping off your steering wheel, 
if you can commit to destroying your enemy and destroying all of humanity, then they're not going to launch the first strike in the first place. So in the movie Dr. Strangelove, the Soviets have set up this automatic doomsday device that cannot be stopped in the event of a nuclear attack. But the, the funny thing, the sort of joke, is that they don't tell anyone because, you know, and the quote from the movie is that the commissar likes surprises and they, they were going to bring it out as a surprise, but, uh, but then, uh, you know, an, an Air Force pilot or someone in the Air Force goes crazy and orders the nukes to, to the bombers to drop the nukes, and that's it for everyone. So um, if you rip off your steering wheel, you have to wave it out the window. If, if you're going to sink your boats, you have to burn them so everyone can see the flames and the smoke. If you're going to create a doomsday device to end the world, if, if there's a nuclear strike against you, you have to publicly announce that you're going to do that. And Thomas Schelling consulting on this film um, was, was part of the, the sort of joke there of why would you build a device like this and not tell anyone?